The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Gee, it's hot today, Casey. Here it is only April 24th. April 24th, the anniversary of Ethelred. My anniversary, Casey? You know I ain't even married. I didn't say you, Ethelbert. I said Ethelred, once king of England. Oh, what's he famous for? Oh, who knows? But everyone knows what Anchor Hawking is famous for. Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Gentle Strangler. April, spring, around nine o'clock in the evening. A quiet neighborhood. From one of these homes, a dignified white-haired gentleman emerges and strolls leisurely down a tree-lined avenue. A man appears from the shadow of one of the trees and... Pardon me. Hmm? Can I beg the favor of a light? Light? (laughs) I wish to smoke. I have a cigarette and no match. Oh, certainly, My lighter. Thank you. You are Judge Whitcomb, are you not? Yes. yes. I have seen your picture in the papers. Well, eh? May I walk with you to the next corner? If you wish. Good evening, Judge. Oh, good evening, Dr. Crawford. Beautiful night. Lovely, lovely. Spring is finally here. Yes, yes. Spring. The end of winter. The beginning. Hmm? I don't recognize you, sir. You live in this neighborhood? No. I do not live anywhere. I beg your pardon? I say, I do not live. I do not understand. You will. Because the dead do not live. The dead? Yes, Judge Whitcomb. This clump of evergreens here. They are the dense. <coughs> they cast deep shadows. Why are you choking me? You see, Judge, you do not live anymore. You do not live. Hold it a second, guys, will you? I want to get a shot of you putting that body in the dead wagon. Okay, Casey. Okay, got it. Thank you. Slide him in, Jim. Let's go. Now, Logan, how did old Judge Whitcomb get it? Huh? Oh, the captain's just been telling me you strangled, Casey, by a person unknown. Strangled? Mm, like Assistant District Attorney Dunning got his last week. And are you newspaper people are going to make things sweet for me, Miss Williams, if I don't crack both cases in a hurry? Well, when big shot citizens like a judge and an assistant DA aren't safe within a few minutes' walk of their own front doors, pal, there's obviously something wrong someplace. I'm in no mood for kidding. Who said I was kidding? Uh, nuts. <laughs> okay. When was the judge strangled? About nine o'clock. He'd started out for his usual evening walk. Shortly after he left his house, uh, Dr. Crawford, who lives in the next block, saw him with a strange man. But except that he was a big guy, and the doc can't give any description of a stranger. Well, nothing was stolen from the judge, Casey. Apparently, the motive wasn't robbery any more than it was in the Dunning murder. When a criminal court's judge and an assistant DA get killed within a week of each other, Logan, and are killed the same way... Sure, it looks as though someone they sent to jail is pulling a payoff. Oh, right? Dunning prosecuted an awful lot of crooks before Judge Whitcomb. Hundreds, Miss Williams. 
It won't be easy to figure the particular one who killed them both. This thing tonight at least looks like a tie-up, though. Yeah, the man last seen with the judge is described as big. That's something. Well, I'm heading downtown to check all cases Dunning prosecuted in Whitcomb's court. Then we'll see how much those somethings are. <laughs> Joe, will you take care of that lady over at the table? She wants a glass of half and half that's a third ginger ale. Oh, such people come in here, Miss Williams. They ask for the darndest things. I'll have another glass of water, pal. There, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your pretzels, Ethelbert, have given him a thirst. That's the idea of having pretzels on the bar. But a thirst for water don't pay our rent or our license. I'll tell you what. I'll come in here someday and buy a beer, Ethelbert. That is, when the price comes down. Have a pretzel, Annie? Hmm, you mind if I do? While you two are eating up the profits, what's new on them strangling cases? Don't you read the papers? Sure I do. And I think it's a crying shame the way they're all picking on Captain Logan. You and Miss Williams told me he ain't got a single clue to work on outside of the idea that Dunning and Judge Whitcomb was killed by the same man. Yeah, well, that idea's beginning to pay off now, Ethelbert. Logan made an arrest this evening. He did? Mm-hmm. Yep. And it looks as though he has the right man. Well, tell me about it. Well, about eight years ago, Lloyd Dunning prosecuted a crook named Rankin before Judge Whitcomb huh? on a burglary charge. He got a conviction. And the judge gave Rankin the limit. Rankin claimed he'd had a raw deal, made a lot of big threats. He was released from prison just a week before Dunning was strangled. He's a big man, and he has no alibi for the times when the killings took place. Have another pretzel. Mm, thanks. A little more water, Ethelbert. Mm, for both of us. You know that water's on a meter, don't you? <laughs> this is becoming an outright swindle. Hey, you better fill the pretzel bowl up, too. We're touching bottom down here. Okay, but... Oh, excuse me, there's the bar phone. <laughs> His pretzels were saved by the bell, Annie. <laughs> Blue Note Cafe, Ethelbert speaking. Yeah, he's right here. Your city editor, Casey. Uh-oh. All right, give me it. Take it. Hello, Burke. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, now, Burke. Well, okay, all right, I got a pencil ready. Go ahead, shoot. Alleyway on Market Street, just south of 12th. I got it. Huh? What's happened there? What? We're on our way, Burke, right now. Wait, say, what is it, Casey? Another strangling, Annie. Another? A detective got it this time, and Rankin didn't do the job. He's locked up in jail. That corpse was Barney Lennon, Casey. One of my homicide guys and one of the best. Yes, he was a swell cop, Logan. A swell guy, too. You know, this strangler must be an awfully strong guy. Barney was no pushover. Well, the strangler must have gotten him unaware. Yeah, he must have. You know, Barney Lennon must have arrested the man whom Dunning prosecuted and Judge Whitcomb sentenced. Oh, maybe these three stranglings are wholly unrelated. Maybe we're dealing with a maniac. Well, a killer may be a maniac, Logan, but it's stretching that long arm of coincidence too far to believe that these three jobs are unrelated. Yes, three law enforcement officers in the same way and within three weeks. Hmm. Yeah. A job a week. The killer may give us proof of relationship, Logan. Next week. <laughs> Look, Mr. Candido, never have I offered anyone such a bargain in my shop. An almost new speed graphic camera with a double plasma lens. Jake, and I that, need uh, another camera like you need 12 toes. Dan, sell one of your old ones. I'll make you a trade. If I lose money, so... uh, (laughs) If you lost money on a deal, so it'd be a miracle. I'm trading no cameras today. Well, say, a man can only try, you know. Uh, Send out that stuff I ordered first thing in the morning, will you? For you, Mr. Candido, I'll have it delivered as soon as I open the shop. And don't forget, I need those photo folders especially. You'll get them. Uh, The new business is doing good, huh? I can't complain. Mm -hmm. When I think of you running a photographic studio that specializes in taking pictures of little children... (laughs) I got to live. (laughs) You, who used to be a press photographer taking shots of fires and accidents and political conventions... (laughs) It was those conventions that made me decide to leave the newspaper business. 
Good night, Jake. Well, I'll take you to the door, then I'm going to lock up and go home myself. There wouldn't be any more business tonight. Well, that big guy looking in your window may be a customer. Dan, don't be crazy. He's just a window shopper. I can always tell. Well, good night, Mr. Candido. Night, Jake. And don't forget that early delivery. First thing in the morning, you'll get it. I got it all written down. Nice camera that you have in your window. The best that money can buy, mister. I'd like to buy one. Uh, you like it? <laughs> Say, well, a man could be wrong. I beg your pardon? I was just saying to my last customer that you was only a window shopper. <laughs> I was going to close up. Oh, come on in. Thank you. You are the proprietor of this? Uh, it's me. Now, what kind of camera can I show you? Do you keep other things besides cameras? Anything for taking pictures? I got it. Where? The store is so small. I got a big stock room in front. Before I select a new camera, I had in mind uh, an enlarger. Well, I got that big stuff in back. Now, what size do you want? Now, bring it out. To save you the trouble, suppose I go with you and look. Okay, okay, this way. And what a bargain I can give you. Like none you ever had before in your life. If it's a four by five you want, I got an open dancers. And if it's a five seven, I got an only simple projection that it would make your head... It is only you I want. Look, go my coat. Look, only you I want. Only you. <coughs> This strangling proves we're dealing with a madman, Casey. This Jake Blumberg had nothing to do with the law. He simply ran a little camera shop. Jake once had something to do with law enforcement, Logan. Yeah? What, Casey? He was the star witness, Annie, in a murder case. Oh, Say, I remember now. Yeah, I thought you would, pal. It was his testimony that got that Ivanov girl a death sentence. Mm-hmm. You remember the rest? Barney Lennon arrested her. Dunning prosecuted her. Judge Whitcomb sentenced her. Right. Casey. Yeah. I'm the guy who dug up the evidence against her. I must be next on the Strangler's list. With present living costs what they are, Fire King Oven Glass is doubly welcome. One, because Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking, the world's largest makers of household glass, its cost is incredibly low, and each piece is guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Two, Fire King Oven Glass lets you make delicious, healthful meals out of leftovers of all kinds and out of inexpensive ingredients. And foods baked in Fire King Oven Glass inside the oven retain all their precious vitamins and delicious flavor. So ask for Fire King Oven Glass by name at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, and department store. Beautiful, practical, inexpensive Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Come on now, talk, Casey. Tell me about this Ivanov case. Well, okay, Annie. It was before you came to work on the paper. Uh, 1939 or 40. Uh, 39, Lord. Uh, well, the war just started in Europe. Yeah. Well, a gal named Irene Ivanov was suspected of poisoning some guy. She handed him a poison cocktail but one Casey, night. But, Casey, what did you have to do with this case? Uh, Casey discovered that Irene Ivanov had bought the poison at Jake Blumberg's camera shop in the form of a chemical used in developing photographs. Mm-hmm. Now, he got Jake to identify her, and that convinced a jury. Assistant District Attorney Dunning, Barney Lennon, and I were able to show that the Ivanov dame never even snapped a camera shutter in her life and had no legitimate use for photographic supplies. Uh, Before Judge Whitcomb could sentence her, she committed suicide. Suicide? Yep. Got hold of a razor blade in jail and cut her wrists. When her mother heard the news, she had a fatal heart attack, and they were buried together. At least Irene was an only child. But Casey, how does the strangler tie in with this? You say the Ivanov girl was an only child, and that she and her mother are dead. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What about the father? Before the murder, he had gone back to Russia, Annie. The Soviet government, with a war headed its way, kept him over there. When he heard what had happened to his wife and daughter, Miss Williams, uh, the poor fellow had to be put in a madhouse. Well, you think he's been released and is back in this country? Uh, It's possible. After what's happened, I'd say it's probable. Well, then all you have to do is is to find him. Miss Williams, how do you find a man you've never seen and who has no criminal record? The only thing I can remember, even being said about him, Logan, 
in a descriptive way, I mean, was that he was a big and a gentle guy. I don't remember the gentle part, but his bigness clicked with me as soon as you mentioned the Ivanov case. Did anybody see a big guy come into this camera shop before Jake was killed? I don't know, but the last sale he made before he was killed was for stuff to be delivered to a Mr. P. Candido. Candido? Yeah, uh, here's his order book with the name and address. Hey, hey, that's Pat Candido. Pat? Sure, Pat Candido. You know him, Logan. He used to be an ex on the news. Yeah. And if Pat happened to see that big guy... It's been his business to notice things. Come on, we're calling on Candido right away. <laughs> medical examiner says that Jake was killed at about 7.30, Candido. You say you left his shop at about that time? Yes, Jake said he was closing up his place and going home. But I saw someone go in right after I left. What did he look like, Pat? He was big, Casey. That's yeah. all I can tell you about. Oh, well, you got to tell us more than that, fella. That guy was Jake's murderer, and I think. Come I've on. been thinking. He was just a big guy I saw looking in a window and never expected to see again. You were supposed to be a hot press photographer before you got soft and went into the baby picture racket. You were supposed to have a nose for news. Oh, was my nose supposed to tell me he was going to commit a murder? Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. I'm sorry I let you down, Casey, but I just don't remember... Wait a minute. Hmm? That big guy has eyes like a baby's. Like a bit. What do you mean? I take pictures of young kids all day, and, well, the babies, the infants, their eyes are different. They seldom focus when they look at you. They seem to look through you and all around you and not at you. Yeah, I know what you mean, Pat, but that isn't much help. Is that the best you can do for us, huh? That's all I can do for you. Yeah, well, thanks, pal. It's at least more than we had before. Well, now, that isn't enough to give Casey warning of a man who undoubtedly intends to strangle him next week. Now, what are you going to do about that, Captain Logan? Don't worry, Miss Williams. Casey won't be alone any moment of the day or night from now on. Huh? What do you mean I won't be alone? Well, I'm not particularly concerned about your skin. And I want to catch a murderer and your bait. Wherever you go and whatever you do, a cop will be right beside you. You know, I, I feel like a two-year-old kid that isn't allowed out without his nursemaid. It's bad enough in the daytime, but when I have to look at one of you cops in my own apartment at night here... I don't like it any better than you do, Casey. If you were a pleasant company, it wouldn't be so bad, but you do nothing but gripe. Well, I... <laughs> I'm sorry, Mac. Would you like a drink? I would, yeah. But if I touched the drop and the captain found it out, I'd be back to pavement pounding in a uniform. When he gives orders to guard a guy, he means you don't do it with liquor under your belt. Oh, nuts. There isn't even any sociability with you, Lugs. Well, you ought to be glad we're on our toes. You know, Casey, it's just a week ago tonight since Jake Blumberg was knocked off. And you're next. Mm. I could handle that strangler by myself. I'm not anemic, you, you know. You don't know the guy, Casey. Mm. wonder if Ivanov has a Russian accent. No, it isn't likely. He was brought to this country as a kid and lived here most of his life. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's almost midnight, Mac. Yeah. I start work tomorrow on the 8 a.m. shift, so I might as well hit the sack again. You know, I'll be able to do a little sleeping myself tonight. Hope my relief shows up at 12 sharp. Who is your relief tonight? Oh, some guy named Norris. I don't know him. He's a uniformed cop from the precinct house. A uniformed cop? Yeah, Detective Bureau has enough men to do all its work right now, Casey. We homicide guys especially have more than we can do. I know that. Of course, a plain clothes guy like me will pick you up in the morning. Mm. That'll be something I'll look forward to. Yeah. Well, I hope Patrolman Norris won't mind a little fancy snoring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to change into my pajamas. All right, this is the place, Norris. Casey's Apartments 3B. Thanks for giving me a lift here, Lieutenant. Sorry, right, I was going this way. I remember your instructions, lad. No sleeping on this job. Keep your eyes open and your ears working. If anything happened to Casey while you're on duty, it'll be too bad for you. And if you're lucky enough to nab the strangler, you can store away that uniform and get yourself a detective shield. I'll be on the job, sir. All right, you'll find a drive-it-yourself elevator back of the lobby stairs. Good night, Norris. Good night, Lieutenant.
Good evening, officer. Evening. Going to Mr. Casey's apartment. Who wants to know? I'm a friend of his. Just left him. The detective with him said he was expecting his relief. Oh, I see. Here, here's the elevator. I just got out of it. Press number three button there. Oh, thanks. <coughs> you went to sleep nice and quiet, officer. Hardly a sound. Now I'll take you to the roof and tie up. <laughs> You're big like me. Your uniform will fit me fine. Yeah, that relief cop is over five minutes late already, Casey. Well, you're actually off duty now, Mac. How about that nightcap? No, no, thanks. Not till the guy gets here. Mm. Here I'm all ready to hit the beauty rest, and you keep me up because I... We'll give you a little hospitality for you, shove off. Well, there's your relief. No, now. I'll get him. Yep. Keep away from that door, Casey. Uh, what do you mean? It just might be the bird I'm guarding you against. Oh, nuts. Who's there? Officer Norris, 23rd Precinct. Okay, just a minute. <laughs> Cop with a lisp. One of our best dicks on the safe and loft squad stutters. Yeah, I know him. All right, come in, Norris. Thanks. I'm your relief. Yeah. And a late relief. I'm sorry. It couldn't be helped. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, too. All right, give me that nightcap, Casey, and I'll get out of here. Okay, Mac. How about you, Norris? No, thank you. <laughs> I guess you know your orders. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never run into you before, Norris. My name's McAvoy. Nice to know you. I'm Casey. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Here's your poison, Mac. Oh, thanks, Casey. Well, here's how. How? <clears throat> Well, I'm heading for home now. <clears throat> you lock the door when I go out, Norris, and take care of this lug Casey. I'll take care of him. You'll find me pain in the neck, but you'll have to stand for that. Uh, sock him if he gripes too much and put him to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I may do that. Come on, get out of here, Mac. Yeah, I'm on the way, Casey. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, I'll lock the door. I'm going to bed, Norris. There's a lot of magazines on that table for you to read if you want. Some books in that case and this bottle. Help yourself to all of them. Thanks very much. You got a long, dreary night ahead of you. All nights are long. <laughs> well, I'd hate to have your job, sitting up guarding a guy that snores. <laughs> Maybe you won't snore tonight. You're an optimist. Well, good night. Good night. Uh, say, uh... Yes? Yeah? How did a guy like you ever decide to be a cop? It was a means to an end. What end? Uh, excuse me, I, I'm getting kind of personal on such short acquaintance, but you seem such a gentle sort of fellow that I... Gentle. Why do you look at me like that, Mr. Casey? Just sizing you up. How do you size me up? Okay. You're okay. I think I'll have a nightcap. I prescribe it. Sure you won't join me? No, thank you. Detective McAvoy should be out of the building now. Well, on his way home, don't you think? Yeah. I think so, too. And since we won't be disturbed... No, you don't! My eyes! The whiskey! Yeah, I've got a full glass right in them. I even off. I've got my hands on you now. You'll die like the others who killed my daughter. Hey, you... Can't move so quick. But you're not going to strike anything. Me. Again, I have a gun. You won't use it, though. How was that for size? Now try this on your whiskers. Boy, if you'd ever really gotten those big mitts of yours around my neck. Hello, headquarters. Give me Captain Logan, will you? He isn't in, huh? Well, when he comes in, tell him Casey called and to send a wagon up to my joint for the strangler. Yeah, yeah, he's sleeping right now in my apartment, and I'm afraid I'll wake him up if I start to snore. Yo, oh, wait a minute. Give Logan another message for me. Tell him my opinion of his idea about having me guarded is fooey. <laughs> Thank you.
Breakfast time tomorrow morning is a long way off, and that makes breakfast just about the most important meal of the day. Now, when I was a small boy, breakfast was an exciting experience. On my grandmother's table, there was always a great plate of hot golden brown toast and at least a half dozen different jellies, jams, and preserves to add zest and sparkle to those good old-fashioned breakfasts. Now, that's one reason we're so glad tonight to salute the Preserve Industry Council of America for its magnificent campaign to brighten up the breakfast toast with mouth-watering strawberry and apricot, sweet tart orange marmalade and blackberry jam, fragrant apple butter and currant jelly. Why, how much more inviting they can make your breakfast table. They whet young appetites, provide quick energy to see you through the day. Practically all preserves come to you today in crystal clear sanitary glass containers. Anchor glass containers and modern anchor hawking sealing methods not only protect these superb products of tree and bush and vine more perfectly than any methods known to our grandparents, but they also provide a stimulating colorful rainbow on the table. Always serve a variety of jams, jellies, and preserves at breakfast. Anchor glass containers and easy-to-remove anchor caps are both products of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. But, uh, Casey, how did you get wise to that Ivanov guy in the cop's uniform? His eyes were like a baby's, Ethelbert. They didn't focus. Mm, the eyes of mad people are often like that. Yeah. And Ivanov is as crazy as they come, poor devil. He's going to spend the rest of his life in a nut house. Of course, those funny eyes Pat Candido noticed put me on guard, you see. I, well, I filled that whiskey glass just in case. I wasn't going to take any chances. Mm, Ivanov had the cop's revolver, Ethelbert, in case he couldn't take chances. Right. How'd you find the cop whose uniform Ivanov had taken? He was on the roof, tied up and gagged. Otherwise, he was okay. Ivanov had been listening outside Casey's door. He'd heard the name of the cop that was to relieve McAvoy. And that McAvoy didn't know him personally, so he just put poor Norris to sleep and took his place. Seems to me that for a crazy guy, he went about his strangling business in a pretty smart way. Well, insane people often have a very sane side, pal. And vice versa. Why look at me? I wasn't looking at you, Casey. I was looking at that pretzel bowl. Oh. Well, don't just look at it. Mm -mm. It's empty again. Fill it up. Yeah. And Ethelbert. I know. Two more glasses of water. Yeah. And cold this time. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation and is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Next week, part of the country goes on daylight saving time. If your area remains on standard time, tune in your favorite radio program, Crime Photographer, one hour earlier. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.